Hey everybody, Robot here from Investment Motorsport and ScooterWest.com. So you've probably already watched the video on how to completely detrim your 2023 Vespa GTS HPE2, as we like to call them here at ScooterWest.com. Um, now it's time to put it all back together, but we're gonna do a little twist on it. This is a Super, so it's got the deluxe wheels, the white bodywork, but not any of the Super Sport trim, which is all black. Uh, putting a flat rack on there, we're going to replace all those chrome bits with the gloss black bits. You can find all these parts on ScooterWest.com. We have them typically all in stock to change all the trim out. A lot of times I like to say you're just going into the parts bin. You can make whatever you want, change out the trim. You can custom paint this trim. You can see that it's actually painted if you're doing something custom. So let me show you how to put it back together, whether you just using this video as aid for reassembling your scooter, or you just wanna see all the cool black stuff I'm gonna put on it. So stay tuned, let's get started. So we're gonna put the original Piaggio flat rack, uh, the Scooter West part numbers, GTS 29 PA-BK for black. Uh, there's other options available. If you're on a budget, there's uh, some decent aftermarket options as well that are made in Italy. That will work just as well. Uh, this rack is suitable for the factory top case. So if you want to put the original Vespa top case, it's color keyed to the scooter. It's a perfect rack for you. Uh, maybe you want to put an aftermarket Givi or Shad top case. This rack will work just as well. So you have fasteners in these four corners. Um, have your T30. As you can see, I'm kind of lifting the rack. Pretty important that you get those started straight. Very easy to cross thread those screws. Everything's loose right now. So that's kind of always pretty important when you're assembling accessories. Kind of start, make sure everything's going in straight. And even this screw just has a little bit more friction. You can see the, it's lifted off. There's just, these, even the best accessories, sometimes there's some tolerances from scooter to scooter. Uh, the screws holes on these racks are pretty small, so there's not much give. Uh, worst case is maybe you need to open up the holes with a step drill bit. And at this point, I have those two started. I went ahead and tightened those so they're quite tight. With accessories, it's always good to go back and uh, recheck the torques on these fasteners. And if you're going to use a torque wrench, Probably about seven foot pounds all you need to do. Have those loose. This is nice and easy to feed the rack underneath this plastic piece. Drop the pet carrier back in here. So there's your rear rack installed. Sometimes these buckets need a little bit of adjustment. Looks good right now. Set the seat down nice and gently. Now it's time to put the black trim on. So start with the floorboard trim first, set that in place. As you can see, there's a little bit of adjustment. And just like that rear rack, we'll get all the screws started. And this step, I'm not gonna use the power driver like I did in the first round. Just get all the screws started, with the exception of that one right there, because that one sandwiches both upper and a lower. So go ahead and hold the trim against the bodywork fairly tight if you're looking for the best fit and finish as you do the final torquing of the trim pieces. And I'm starting from this upper corner, kind of working my way down. And that will get you the best fit and finish. And then the one screw that overlaps the two pieces. And pretty much just repeat for the, the other side. So one little mistake I made with the trim, 11 screws on each side, not 12. So there's the screw that sandwiches the upper and the lower trim. That actually is left out because when you put the floorboard back in, that's when that hole gets occupied. So now it's time to get the floorboard back in place. And it may be handy to have a rag so you're not grinding the plastic as you're pushing 
this back into place. You got things like the fuse holder and connections along with a fan, the radiator hose as you're pushing this back into position. So it takes a little bit of force sometimes to get this down into position. And kind of once you have it in position, you can slip that rag out of the way. And you just look, you can see the floorboard actually goes into the groove in the trim. The first screw I like to install is the center screw right here with that little bonus washer. So you may need to shift things around, that fuse holder, all that. And we'll go ahead and get this into place. And you can see it pulls this gap. Next, we'll work on the pair of fasteners here. Again, T30 driver, put those back in place. And you get a little bit of movement. See how you could move this around to kind of get your gap to look uh, good all the way around, look real even. So kind of just give it, move it around as needed. And pretty much the same steps for the other side. Uh, you're gonna have your four fasteners. T25 driver will do the trick. This has got a clutch on it, set to a real low tension because they are going into a plastic snap-in fasteners that are like a square plastic nylon nut that you could replace. Snap the floorboard and cap into place. You can see the seam kind of overlap all this and there's a little pin under here that snaps in place. So get the black foot pegs installed in place of the silver ones that were normally found on the Super. I'll put the one fastener in there. It's got a wave washer and a flat washer. I use the ball and Allen driver. I kind of just snake it back into position. It's also a perfect opportunity to add the foot peg extenders. They're actually easier to install than the pegs into the frame. So make sure you get the screw started. There is a little bit of an angle to it. Sometimes hard to judge when getting this just started. There we go. So just leave it in there lightly so you can move everything around. And usually the foot peg needs quite a bit of alignment to make that gap nice and even all the way around. So just like such. So you can see it's high here, almost touching there. The gap's too large there. So there we go. They're just barely holding in place. Carefully snap it back out. And then do one more check. Looks pretty good. Yeah, nice even gap all the way around. And at this point, go ahead and snug those fairly tight. So go ahead and snap the rubber floor trim back in place. Kind of work from the back, move towards the front, or even vice versa. You can start at the front, that works just as well. A little peg that goes in that last position right there. And sometimes they just need a little bit of manipulating. I find over time they shrink a little bit, so they'll actually look better as they're aged. So there's two ways to remove the reflector. You can just cut the peg and the clips will pop right out. But if you're looking to salvage the reflector, you can sometimes get under the clip with a really sharp set of diagonal pliers, kind of pry up, and carefully pull that off. So this point I've actually I'm able to salvage the reflector they do have a little foam buffer under there as well the clips are trash if you want new clips 181351 go ahead and pull the reflector out and we can put the the reflector plugs in later when this is all installed all right so we'll go ahead and put the side skirt back in place so you start from the front, getting the two hooks into the floorboard itself. 
get that gap closed up. So you start from the front, engage the two clips into the floorboard and you get that gap closed up. And then go ahead and push the rubber plugs and pegs right back into the rubber plugs actually. And then the back will actually hook over top of that fastener. There's two types of fasteners. Uh, there's a, a machine screw looking screw for the, the left side and then the right side actually uses a thread forming screw. Then you got the nut that's approximately right around here. Use a ratchet to tighten that all the way. And the last fastener. All right, so now that the two side pieces are in place, the side skirts I like to call them. Snap that in place. The two fasteners up here. And the pair of small screws go up here, right beside the reflector. So we're going to replace the taillight with a Super Sport taillight. Go ahead and plug this connection in. You see this little slot right here? It keys with this little bracket right here. Sometimes it wants to rotate. Just slide it right on there. Now the connector's going to stay in place. Now there's the two pegs that engage with those rectangular holes and a threaded fastener. So, so usually you get them all lined up. Takes a little bit of um, elbow force there to snap that in place. Then you locate that center stud. Holds the lower section of the taillight in place. Get your small ratchet. All right, so pretty straightforward. Put your battery mat back in place. Center mat, battery cover, whatever you want to call it. Next, I would suggest draping a microfiber rag right there. And we'll go ahead and start with assembly of the glove box. All right, it's probably best to have the glove box door open. This fuse block goes in and then you slide it backwards onto the hook and we'll make a click just like that. Push that through and then it slides in two little rails on the top and the bottom and we'll click into place just like that. Take your keyless module. It's got the connector with the tab. Locate the connector. Listen for the click. There's this fir tree zip tie goes like such. You got the connector for your USB. And then you have your connection for your turn signal flasher. And the last connection, not necessarily an electrical cable, but a mechanical backup cable. And snap that into place. And before you go too far, you want to hook that barrel back into the lever. All right, so have the handlebar covers out of the way. Glove box is open. You see they got a rubber band on this lever right here. If the rubber band isn't present, you could either add a rubber band, go around this hook here and right there. Alternatively, you could just hold the lever down. That works as well. So the glove box lever itself inside the glove box. Um, and I want to make sure the routing of these cables is above the ABS pump. And the most difficult part is getting these two edges around all the cables and the keyless 
um, ignition lock itself. And if there's any uh, difficulty, sometimes you need to check that routing of the cables. So I'll kind of put it in that cavity. There's like a cavity right up there where there's a little bit of space. And look at both sides. You see this side's not quite lined up, getting close. All right, so once you get the glove box around all this cables and that keyless module, sometimes you gotta wash the wiring for your, um, the fuse block. It will kinda wanna bind up. And just look all the way around, see how it all fits. It's not gonna wanna hold in perfect, but once you got it pretty close, go ahead and start this center most fastener. You're gonna need the T30 Torx. It's a step style screw. Go ahead and check your gaps all the way around. You can see it just needs to be popped in. Looks good all the way around. You'll find the long screws and they go in the lower outer corners. If you're gonna use a power driver, you wanna have a clutch set up. Take the, locate the short screws. They go on the inner. Reinstall the radiator cap. Just do it fairly tight by hand. You have the outer short screws that go into these corners behind those. Knee pads, as I like to call them. And double check your joints, say it popped a little bit. You may loosen the screw. Take the medium blunt screws and they hold both of these covers in place. All right, so there's your glove box. Make sure you know, turn the ignition on. Make sure that this opens and closes before you close your glove box. Make sure the manual seat release pot works. And then go ahead and close the glove box. All right, so we're gonna put the gloss black speedometer bezel on this all white scooter here. And they have several pretty tiny self-tapping screws go into perimeter, there's six of them. And you can see I'm using a real stubby little driver. That's gonna be your best way to reinstall those screws. So we're gonna go ahead and reinstall the speedometer Hold it in place, and you almost need three hands here. Self-tapping screws that thread into the plastic. Find a better angle. And probably easier way to do this would be just to completely disconnect all the wiring and do that on a workbench. Make sure the clips for both sides are in place. They tend to want to fall off. And we'll carefully slide the speedometer back up in place. Make the connection. Makes it a little easier while everything's apart. You're gonna have two different types of screws holding the handlebar covers all together. The machine style screws have a pointy tip and kind of more fine threads go in each of these corners and ideally you don't want to tighten these all the way at first and then we'll get the four screws that hold the handlebar covers to the handlebars themselves from the back side Obviously the easy ones are up here. Don't tighten these too tight. They are going into plastic of the handlebar covers. And then 
and the tricky ones kind of behind all the wiring. You could use your finger, use the, you could put grease on the tip of the screw and try magnetizing. A lot of these screws are kind of stainless steel even though they're, they're black so they don't tend to to want to um, magnetize sometimes or want to stick to a magnetized screwdriver that is. Got that one. Lift the wiring, carefully feed the screw in. Once that's tight, kind of tuck that wiring back in there. You don't want to get pinched between the handlebar covers. It's for uh, heated grips that can get installed not the factory ones that are impossible to obtain and install. So go ahead and install the black levers that are specific for the 2023 and later GTS. Part number 1C007042-2. Three dash BK and that's for a pair of them from Scooter West or Scooter West exclusive part. And we have one with a RL and that's going to be your left lever and it pretty much just slides right in just like the original. I'd recommend putting a small amount of grease on the pivot pin. Same with that little ball and socket. There's, it's a fairly new bike so there's still grease in there. I think go ahead. Thread the step bolt all the way through, which is the pivot for the lever itself. Take a nylon locking nut. Thread that onto the bottom. And if the, the step bolt's tight enough, it's not gonna spin. There we go. And pretty much repeat with that left side. All right. So got black levers on there. Before pr proceeding further, we're going to go ahead and drop this little s spacer in between. It slots in. Definitely easy to do when everything's apart. And you'll see when the hole lines up right here, that's right where you want to stop. So go ahead and thread this with your T30 Torx driver. And that's what holds the center of the glove box tight against the trim. So out with the chrome trim and with the black trim, it's got two clips on there already installed. It hooks on to the top and then you can snap it right in place. It's two small self-tapping screws. Hold it in place. And now we can put this back on the rear handlebar covers and complete the handlebars. All right, so we'll go ahead and install the handlebar covers. Don't forget to plug in your headlight connection, three pin connector with purple, brown, and black wire colors on it. So start by tipping the upper section of the headlight into the center gripper clip. It's right in the center and it's gonna click into place and then there's four more black plastic tabs that snap in place on both the left and right sides. And you can kind of see them from the top as you're snapping them in place. The seam is all pretty nice and tidy. Look at the seam on the side, make sure there's no wires pinched in there. Next, you want to take your screw with a little washer on it. And if it's gonna wanna fall off, you may wanna put a little grease on it, or you could just use your finger and hold the screw before it gets started. And thread that in place. And then there's the two silver screws that also have a little washer, have uh, plastic or uh, self-tapping threads on them. And we're gonna do those from the back side and both these switch gears into the front handlebar cover. In some cases, things aren't quite lined up. So go ahead and take your horn cover. It's got the four gripper clips right there. Just give it a little bounce and it will snap right into place. 
single screw in the center underneath where the badge goes. Snap the Biagio badge in, start from the right side, and then click it in on the left there. And one last thing, we're gonna go ahead and change this out. You wanna have this little shorty screw, screwdriver with a number one Phillips on it. Obviously it can be easier if you don't have a front tire in place. Kind of reach around, you'll find the little plastic cups with the, the small screws in the center of them. So kind of holding it in place, there's the plastic cup with the screw. And you'll find another one in the front here. All right, drop the fender crest in place. And you kind of want to put a little pressure on the fender crest as you get those screws started. Again, if you don't have a short screw, just go ahead and remove the front wheel. So if you're going to reuse the same grips and blow them off, the throttle side is not going to have any adhesive. It kind of just relies on friction. The plastic chrome ring or the black ring, they're actually sold as a separate spare part. You can squeeze the grip and change it out for a black one. And with throttle grip, not really a need to use any adhesive. But you do want to have some air with a... And there you go. And you see the Vespa, you can actually change the position of it just by getting the air in there and rotate it so kind of when you're sitting on it, you see Vespa. And make sure the grip's working fine. Uh, just the plastic's the only bit showing. And you can change it out with the black bar and weights of any sort. You can do the big ones with the top case, um, the shorties that are included with the scooter. Um, they're available in black and chrome. And now you have the kind of black treatment on the handlebars here. All right, so we'll go ahead and put the black mirrors on. Maybe a good idea to put some anti-seize on the threads. 2023, they use a 10 millimeter style mirror, so it's not compatible with the older style mirrors. More of a, and on the right side, just standard threads. Left side, it's got reverse threads. So there you go. It's pretty much a super sport, but a super. So just with changing the trim, you kind of change the look of the scooter. It's a pretty good look. All right, thanks for watching. Hope that helped you out. If you made it all the way to the end, kind of pretty much how to put all the trim and body work back together on your 2023 Vespa GTS. Until next time, Robot here from Vespa Motorsport, ScooterWest.com. We have all the parts you ever need. Check us out on web, ScooterWest.com. Whether you got a modern Vespa like this or an old vintage Vespa, we got the parts you need. See you on the next one.